Thanks for having me. Good to see you all. Um, thrilled to be here and have wonderful speakers with me here on stage. Uh, I would like to talk to you today about the twist of execution, um, which is basically a few patterns and thoughts I've seen emerging um, throughout uh, my work, which is about bringing ideas to life, something I do on a day-to-day -day basis together with a group of wonderful, talented designers at IDEO but also with teams and organizations and companies uh, I work with to de develop services, products, and new ventures. It's been a mankind's dream uh, to come up with a breakthrough idea, a perfect plan to be carried out, uh, to reach the sky or final result. I think we've been all there. Um, persistence, ambition, all great ingredients uh, to build for me, a good metaphor, the Tower of Babel. Uh, and yet, building iconic services that have impact remains complex. Why is that? Please keep that question. A couple of weeks ago, I stumbled upon an article about the German startup scene in the Wall Street Journal. And the article was basically uh, trying to explain how the German model stresses execution over innovation. Hmm, I thought that's an interesting natural juxtaposition made by the author. Um, and I don't want to argue about that thesis here. I'm curious to see what's happening on the startup scene uh, later. Instead, I would like to talk about execution in the context of innovation, not as in operational excellence. One comment about process. So my experience has shown me that innovation is actually there's no single recipe. There is no sausage factory, um, like my colleague Axel <laughs> likes to say, that tells us about, you know, here are four steps you follow. There's a certain amount of meat you put into the factory, and at the end you get a foreseeable amount of results, sausages. Big tada moments, we've had them all, presentations, clapping. Instead, I would like to ask, how do we move from these tada moments to the actual to-dos? How do we move and discover the path from possibility to tangibility to impact? To me, there are three things that mark that path. One is about launching early, testing idea in context, in real context with people. The second one is about never being done and accepting the fact that today products and services keep evolving even after you launch them. And thirdly, that it's about enabling users and helping them become successful in engaging with your service and becoming maybe even co-authors of what we design. Let's start with launching early. Let me introduce you to Food Genius, a Chicago-based food tech startup um, that as a main capability developed um, a set of data that they crawl online, um, massive amounts of data, basically menu items, um, to understand food trends. Um, the screenshots you see here is an early version of their product that in 2011 they showed during a summer academy. At that time, the young team was a consumer-based recommendation app um, on the phone. The team went out, did a series of testing, and uncovered something. They understood that their business model actually had to shift. What if instead to provide the solution, the big data around food to consumers, and being one of many, they would take the same solution and bring it to a different set of problems? Here comes Food Genius Reports, 2013, early launch. Food Genius took what they did, the data, and presented to food professionals to dig through trends. So you can filter the data by ingredients, meal part, restaurant type, price range, geographical location, to depict where's the taste the flavor is currently going. It's a subscription model that you can sign up for. What I think is remarkable, um, what the team did is, that they had the courage early on, when it was not too late, to shift directions that they were about to find the magic combination of here's a problem and a solution uh, and went down a completely different path. Food Genius is um, IDO's first startup in residence. 
Launching early is also about getting inspired by people. We heard it already. Um, it's been common that we talk to actually real people, we listen to them, we know its opinions, we look for behaviors. In this case, change of scenery. Um, it's actually in Switzerland, same year. Uh, an IDEO team went out to talk to people to understand um, the future of financial security for a Swiss insurance company called Swiss Life. The team uncovered um, a couple of really interesting universal needs around finances, being the one that people with actual um, goals are more successful in reaching them, not only in finances, that people have four modes to think about finances. It's about budgeting, the daily in and outs, the saving, the insuring, but also the positive risk-taking being uh, investing. Being quite confident about this set of um, principles, the team sat down and, and, and trying to understand what were the potential directions for a new digital offer in that space. Within six weeks, the team designed an independent microsite called Hoi, which you see here, to understand if the service could be either about setting goals or understanding potential. So the team lifted the curtain way before the opening. Um, through a couple of Facebook ads, some traffic was generated that invited people to enter the data around their income, their expenses, and then compare this to the Swiss average. What's amazing is that the team was able to, to measure behavior rather than opinion, and it confirmed the value that such a new service would provide. Four months later, 100.ch launched the actual offer. What you see here is an individual profile page mine actually, with some saving goals uh, that one can set up by adding a picture, a title, some categories, a monthly amount you want to save. Uh, you can pin that uh, saving goal to inspire others or being inspired, and you can invite your friends to help you actually reach that goal. So you see the difference between Hoi and 100. Um, rather than waiting for the actual plan and the execution, there was a vehicle that helped the team much faster, earlier, cheaper, understand what the potential was and gain some certainty when it was still very early in the process. So launching early to me is really about using live prototyping to minimize risk. You don't want to wait until the end of this line where complexity, the amount of features, the size of organization, the money spent, the time wasted is going on. You want to start with something very simple, build it. It might be rough, it might be early, and you might not be super happy with it, but it helps you gain certainty. So you design to learn from behaviors. I keep asking myself in projects like this, what do we want to learn and how? What's the cheapest way to gain certainty? So even after you're launched, be assured you'll never be done. You'll never be finished, thanks to digital. Here's a screenshot from Orchestra, a team based in Palo Alto working really, really hard on a social to-do app. No matter how hard the team worked, people kept sending them to-dos via email. So instead of after two years um, not recognizing what was not working, the team went off to actually solve a bigger challenge. They went off to transform what email inbox is about. They kept looking for the unexpected and launched Mailbox earlier this year. You might have heard about it. Um, Mailbox has been acquired by Dropbox in the meantime. And I think, yes, it's a great attempt to fix email uh, through a really compelling, simple user interface on the mobile client. But what I think is even more fascinating about the story behind Mailbox is Orchestra. The team, the learnings that have been generated the two years before to make that big shift and to accept that there might be some undoes in your execution to actually go after the bigger purpose and the more long-term vision you're going after. What the story of Mailbox is also acknowledging is that it's really, really, really hard to predict behaviors. No one can actually do that. Instead, there might be ways for all of us to manage unpredictability, and that is experimentation. So continuous experimentation is something that um, development companies are more and more familiar with. Um, you see here an example from, from Etsy's tooling system, uh, where developers can set, set up A-B tests around specific user experience elements. What I'm actually fascinated by this approach is the potential for even non-digital service experiences to test um, and to go beyond the 
purely data-driven design approach, but to combine it. So continuous experimentation um, helps evolve and iterate your product in a meaningful and intentional way. So expect to be never done, iterate fast and often, expect some waste. You may have seen a similar diagram like this, where we all know the phases of where we diverge, we look for the unexpected, and we converge to make decisions. And some tools may help us get to these points in time. But most importantly, keeping the long-term purpose and vision in mind will help us get to the actual impact. The question I keep asking myself is, what's the value we generate for people? We heard about it from Luisa. More simply asked, what do we do what people love and where are we going? I think both um, the examples I showed with especially Maybox is really after going this value. So even when you're never done, there's one piece, and um, we talked about it already in a couple other tours. It's about people. Yes, you can have data and tools, and you can have your product and your solution, but what you really have at the core is people and what makes uh, what you do desirable to them. This is the entrance of Nextdoor. Nextdoor opened in 2011 in Chicago's Lakeview neighborhood. And it's a community-focused community um, financial learning center created by State Farm, America's leading insurance company. So um, Nextdoor is a no-pressure, uh, free financial coaching um, environment where people like you and me can walk in and get some advice around the topics um, that you have in mind. An IDEO team heavily prototyped the service experience, the roles and interactions, and started um, by soliciting feedback, radically questioning the traditional retail environment that is unwelcoming and actually intimidating. And it's purely about selling products that are confusing and irrelevant to people. Instead, what they came up with is what you see here, a space with a cafe, a chalkboard board, where people sit down, talk to each other, not only to staff, but to each other, and where you have one-on-one -on -one alcoves uh, to actually sit down and get some more private advice. So Nextdoor is really about creating a place to collaborate and shift the role of the designers to become facilitators, to create a space where the consumers become the creators and help provide input by telling the staff what are the actual topics they want to talk about, um, how can they contribute in group classes, etc. And interesting enough, Nextdoor is not only a learning center for consumers, it's actually a learning center for State Farm, because State Farm learns about the needs of consumers from themselves. But it's not only about making consumers successful, it's also making, about making your, the people in your organizations, the teams you work for, successful. Think about turning yourself into a platform. One example that keeps um, really impressed me in the, in the last couple of weeks um, is what the government service design team for government.uk has been created. It's not only a, a wonderful access point, well-designed, structured information, everything about public services in the UK. Um, it turns itself into this repository of tools and guidelines in how to contribute to this body of knowledge. The fact that they're sharing performance data live in real time is not only about being transparent, it allows everyone that sees that data to act upon that data. Um, so again, it's much more about scaling your impact than thinking this is what we do, this is what we offer. It's actually helping others to contribute to that offer. So keep asking yourself, how do we scale our impact? How do we provide the tools, the resources to make others successful and contribute to these ever-evolving products and services? To wrap up, um, for me, the twist of execution is really marked by starting earlier. So think about the Tower of Babel with a breakthrough idea. I'd say it's not about the one breakthrough idea. It's about starting to uncover that idea through step-by-step -step approach as early as possible in real context to expect that you will never be done. Forget the 10-year roadmaps, they're outdated. You can only foresee and predict the future so far and enable others to create. It's not about you, it's actually about the others contributing to that service. I hope you can detect those patterns in your work as well and push and foster them um, because I think they're actually 
the best way not to predict the future, but to design it. Thank you very much. <laughs>